All along Iowa's busiest highways, there are terrifying reminders of what became the state's worst winter storm in decades. The weather forced Republican presidential hopefuls to scale back their campaigning plans, though Donald Trump urged his supporters to go to caucus and vote for him no matter the conditions. You can't sit home. If you're sick as a dog, you say, darling, I've got to make it. Even if you vote and then pass away, it's worth it, remember? Trump is dominating the latest Iowa poll with 48 percent support. The caucuses are widely expected to be more of a formality to confirm Trump's win than anything else. On this wintry weekend, our CBC News crew was snowed in, forced to stay put in the southern rural town of Mount Pleasant, which happens to be Trump country. One of the few places people ventured out to was the local sports bar. <laughs> And that's where we found Kim Mosley, who plans on voting Trump. She misses how he kept the cost of living under control, but is oh, okay. underwhelmed by all the Republican candidates and the state of American politics. I feel sorry for my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren, because it's going to be bad. It's getting worse. Just down the street, we met Jay Boland, a salesman who's concerned about the economy. While he's still making up his mind ahead of Monday's caucus, he'll back Trump in the general election if he's the nominee. I do like um, some of his ideas, obviously, but, you know, he is a little divisive, and uh, that, that would be nice to uh, maybe have a little less of that. Trump's divisiveness inspired Mike Bronner to get behind Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. And the way he's run Florida, it has been good. It's an uphill battle, but the retiree hopes other Republicans are growing tired of Trump the way he is. I, I was a Trump guy for the last couple of things, and I, I, eh, I, I think it's time to uh, start looking. And Katie joins us from Des Moines. Uh, if Trump wins Iowa as expected, what does it mean for the race to become the Republican nominee? It gives Donald Trump a head start as he tries to just bulldoze through this contest. And it makes the race for second place far more interesting. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley are likely going to have to come out of Iowa trying to convince voters, saying, hey, look, we didn't beat him this time, but we're going to be able to eventually beat him down the road. Haley's campaign is the one to watch. She's the one who's building momentum heading into the next part of this race, New Hampshire, where polls show she is within striking distance of Trump. Ian. Katie Simpson in Des Moines.